Welcome to the Auto Express Roundup of the New York Motor Show 2016, and here are our show's stars. Nissan were a little bit quiet at the Geneva Motor Show, but they've turned up here at New York with the brand new GTR. Well, I say brand new, it's not totally new, it's tweaked in a certain number of areas. The first of which is at the front end. It looks a little bit more angular and aggressive than it did before. There's a brand new colour, but the most important change is probably the interior. It's a lot more simple. They've tried to improve the quality and the sensory feel of it. So there's a leather covered dashboard, a brand new touchscreen. It looks a lot posher. Typically, Nissan haven't left the important bits unchanged. So there's the engine has been tweaked a little bit. It now delivers over 560 brake horsepower. And amazingly, it can go around corners even faster than it used to. We're going to be getting it in the autumn, and I cannot wait to drive it. Bit of a surprise debut here at New York is the Audi R8 V10 Spider. Like the old car, it's got the canvas roof and the carbon blades down the side. This car will do 0 to 62 in around 3.6 seconds, probably cost about £10,000 more than the hardtop version, so you're looking around £130,000. Not a lot if you say it too quickly. Virtual cockpit inside and the usual Audi R8 styling cues. Would you rather have one of these or a Ferrari? They're getting pretty close on price these days, something I think Audi has to be mindful of. Mercedes isn't normally late to the party when it comes to cars, but with things like the coupe SUV, Mercedes has always been a bit behind the times. They're now changing that with cars like the GLE and this, the GLC coupe. It goes up against cars like the BMW X4, and overall, I think it looks more sporty than the X4. It's a lot more curvy, a lot more seductive. Now, in the UK, we're going to probably only have diesel engines, so there'll be a GLC 220D and a 250D, both using Mercedes' tried and tested 2.1-litre diesel engine. There's probably going to be an AMG version as well, a 43 with a 3-litre twin-turbo V6. I think it looks brilliant. Oh, you see, I don't. I don't think it looks very nice at all. Featureless and a bit of a pointless car. I love SUVs. Coupe SUVs? Why bother? It's only seemed like five minutes ago since Toyota launched the normal Prius, and they've turned up at New York with this, something that looks strangely like the current Prius. Well, that's because it is. It's, in fact, the plug-in hybrid version, and its on-paper stats sound quite amazing. Toyota claims it can do 202 miles per gallon. Whether it can do that or not is an entirely different matter, and it will emit 32 grams per kilometre. It also looks a little bit different. The front end styling's a little bit changed. So is the back end. The lights are now vertical as opposed to horizontal, and the interior is a little bit different as well. It's now got a portrait-style Volvo XC90 style tablet screen in the centre of the dash. Does it look better looking than the standard car? Well, both aren't beauties, are they? Jerry's out. Elsewhere on the Toyota stand was the facelifted GT86. It gets new looks front and rear, but with no mechanical changes whatsoever. Here's a bit of a conundrum for you. In the UK, Subaru is probably the most niche of niche players, but in the US, they sell hundreds of thousands of cars, hugely popular. So New York is the right place to launch the all new Impreza. It sits on a new global platform that is longer in terms of the wheelbase than the old car, and we're likely to get this five-door model in the UK later this year. There'll be traditional boxer engines underneath the bonnet, including a new 1.6, but the big news is inside, where at long last we can say there's a Subaru with a decent interior. Of course, there's the obligatory touchscreen, a dual touchscreen, no less, but quality has taken a real step up. Could this be the Impreza that really puts Subaru back on the map in the UK? Time will tell. It seems like a new Mini comes along every five minutes these days, and this is the newest one. It's the John Cooper Works Convertible. And yes, it doesn't take a huge amount of imagination to realise this is the convertible version of the John Cooper Works hatchback. So that means you get the same two-litre turbocharged petrol engine, pushing out about 228 brake horsepower. It also means you're going to be getting to 60 in under seven seconds, which is pretty fast. Naturally, and obligatory, there's the vast amount of JCW badges, the red strip across the grille, and overall it looks, how can I put this? 
a little bit chintzy. This is the star of the New York Auto Show 2016. It's the Mazda MX-5 RF. The RF is the important part because this is the new version of the Mazda MX-5 with a folding hardtop. But there's a difference. The top doesn't go completely away. It leaves these really fancy, sexy even, buttresses at the back of the car. It looks sensational. We're in the US. It looks a million dollars. Thankfully, it won't cost that. Mazda reckons a premium of around two and a half thousand pounds, which will mean you're going to pay around £21,000 for a 1.5 litre version of this. It's almost a different car, it almost deserves a different name to MX-5. I think it should be called Targa. There's a bit of Porsche, there's a bit of Ferrari about this car. For the money, I think they're going to be selling like hotcakes.